So let's say your boss comes to you and says, hey, you know what? We need a multi-tenant logging aggregation system. What do you do? As I see it, you've got two options. You can either find a multi-tenant logging aggregation system that you can use, or you could start your own candle making business. Just get out of IT altogether. This one's lemon. It's nice. I hear it's lucrative. I don't know, maybe it's an option. Better yet though, since you're already using Prometheus and Grafana, Loki will plug right into that system. So let's talk about how you can get Loki set up. Let's go to the code. To start, I'm gonna create a file that will house our monitoring system. And then I'm gonna create a Docker Compose file for that monitoring system. So that way I can deploy my monitoring system completely separate from each of my web applications or my microservices. So I'm just gonna create a, a file for my monitoring system. And then I'm gonna open up VS Code in here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and create a config folder, which will house our configurations for things like Prometheus and Grafana, things like that. And then I'm gonna create, oh, not inside the config folder, in the regular, uh, in the root, I'm gonna create a Docker Compose file. Okay, so in my Docker Compose file, and I'm gonna have this file in a uh, GitHub repo that you can just take a look at because I'm not gonna bother writing the entire thing out, but we'll go through it and we'll talk about what everything is in it and what everything does. So here is my Docker Compose file. I'm gonna set up a network for monitoring set up a local data for Prometheus data. I'm gonna be using an OpenTelemetry collector, so I'm gonna go ahead and have an OpenTelemetry uh, collector image here. I'm also gonna include uh, Prometheus, or we'll be scraping it into Prometheus. Uh, this is a very simple collector. You can see we have our image, the command for our config location where that's located, um, a volume to point to that config location, uh, the various ports that we're opening, always good to remember your left side is your external port that always throws me off we're joining this to metric for our open telemetry collector that's probably all we need now here in prometheus you can see we're grabbing the latest uh, prometheus image and giving it a container name exposing port 9090 um, we're adding our config file right and so you can see that uh, this config file is actually coming from here so we can go ahead and add that config file now we'll all right so there we've added our, our config file for that. Um, it's gonna restart unless stopped. Let's go ahead and update this one and include that as well. We'll just for our open telemetry collector, restart unless stopped. Uh, so we can keep all this up as much as possible. Um, here is Loki. Now this is a configuration. I got it directly from Grafana uh, in one of their documents. Uh, Promtail writes into Loki. And again, this is just uh, grabbing the image. The config file is part of the image. And in that config file, that's part of the image. I'll show it to you. We can take a look at it, but it writes to Loki. Uh, then we have our Grafana. And this one's a little more complicated. We got a couple of environment variables that we set, an entry point, um, where Loki is. This kind of just adds the data source by default so that we don't have to add it and then the image that we'll be using in the port that we're exposing. So this is our, our Docker Compose file for our monitoring system. And uh, it's pretty easy to set up. We just need to add a couple of config files. You know, we need our uh, open telemetry config file. So I'm gonna go ahead and add otel collector config.yaml. So that's for this one. We've got Prometheus already. Um, do we need anything else? Promptails config is included. We do need a Loki. Uh, actually, Loki's config is conf included as well. That's in the image. So we don't need anything for that. And then Grafana doesn't need one. So I think we only need config files for these two things. We'll see if I'm wrong there um, when we get these started up. So our Prometheus config file, uh, or let's start with our open telemetry config file. This is the exact same open telemetry configuration, which open telemetry isn't required for the logs. This would just be used for monitoring the web server, the microservices. So we're gonna go ahead and add Prometheus. And this is our Prometheus, which again, Prometheus is got its own job for scraping itself and then for the open telemetry collector. But actually neither one of these are required if all you're doing is using logging aggregation. If you find this video helpful at this point, I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a like. But that's basically it, that's that's all we have. So if we were to come in here and say Docker compose up, it's gonna pull those images 
grab everything. Uh, so you can see that it created our network, it created our volume, and then it started all of our containers. So now if we go back into Visual Studio Code, we can go to Docker, and we can see that these are all running, except it looks like Promptail is not running. Let's view the logs. Okay, and it says the config YAML does not exist. Um, the problem that I have there is this uh, Promptail config YAML is actually YML. All right, so now that I've fixed that uh, typo that I had there, my tendency is to always call them YAML. We'll go back, and then you'll see that Promptail is added. Now, the reason Loki doesn't require configuration is because if you come to the if you open up and you look at the files, um, you can see for Loki it's in etc Loki, and then here's load config. And if you you can just open that up and kind of take a look and see what it's doing there. But yeah, that's just the standard configuration, and we could overwrite that if we wanted to. Uh, then in Promptail, if you look, same location except etc promptail and then the config yaml is right there and you can see that this is writing to loki uh 3100 so and that's because if you go back to our docker compose you can see that loki is uh exposed on port 3100 so then if we just open up a new tab and we go to localhost 3000 that's going to bring us to Grafana if we go to explore we can see file name and then the logs and if we refresh you can see that we've got those logs that are uh, being collected which this is nice because uh, we're using Promptail to collect the logs from the system itself but what if we wanted to actually correct or collect logs from like a microservice, for example? So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to our project folder, and then I'm just going to create another directory, and we'll call this monitored microservice. And then in here, we can go ahead and open up VS Code again, and we'll create a .NET project. Control Shift P. And we're going to do a new .NET project. And let's create a ASP Core Web API. And then let's call this monitored microservice default directory. OK, there we go. So we have our monitored microservice in here. So what we're going to do with this particular project is we're going to go ahead and use Serilog. And we're going to have Serilog. There's a Loki sync. And so we're going to write all of our data from uh, this application as it's running. All of our logs are going to be written to Loki and aggregate it there so that we can keep them all in a single, uh, a centralized place. Oh yeah, so we want to add two projects, two, or two libraries to this project. So we're going to say .NET add, and then we're going to specify the name of the project, um, which is monitored microservices.cs proj. And then we're going to say package And the package name is serilog.aspnetcore. All right, once that package is installed, we can add our second package, which is serilog syncs.grafana.loki. That installs that. So then if we go back over to Visual Studio Code into our project, now all we want to do is we want to add our logging configuration. So here we'll just say builder.host.use serilog. And then that should give us an error, control period, use serilog. And then in here, we're going to call a function context and configuration and then this is going to be configuration dot and let's just add this on a new line configuration dot read from configuration 
and then we're reading context.configuration. Okay, and what we're telling it here is we're saying, hey, serial log, we want you to get the serial log configuration from the app settings. That way we can customize the configuration really easily uh, depending on the environment we're deploying to. So then if we go to our app settings, we can just go ahead and paste in our serial log configuration, which is a pretty basic serial log configuration. So after allowed host, comma, and then just I'm pasting in this again. This is going to be in the repositories in the description. But just to walk you through what's happening here, we're telling it to use the serial log syncs Grafana Loki. Um, the name uh, that we want to write to is Grafana Loki. Here's the URL. So this is something that we could uh, you know change depending on deployment environment. Um, and then here is the value of the application name. This is going to be what's in the log. So this we could call our uh, monitored microservice. Let's say version one. Okay, and so then we have that. So now all we have to do is run our application, and then to do that, we're going to create a C sharp deployment of HTTPS. You know, before I launch this application, there's one other thing I want to do. I want to down here before uh, in our app configuration, when you want to say app. Oh, there's a serial log request logging. We want to add this. This adds uh, specific logging configured by serial log based on the request. And you'll be able to see what that does for us here in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and launch it now. We're on port 502. We're going to go ahead and open this in browser. It's because I don't have a certificate, but that's OK for now. We're going to say weather forecast. So you can see that we have these requests coming in. Now, if we come back over to Loki, you'll see we have app listed. And if we click on app, we hit a drop down and we can say monitored microservice one. So then if we refresh here, you can see that we see all those logs. One of the things you can do here is prettify JSON, which is kind of nice. And then it shows you information about the requests that have come in. So this is a request to weather forecast and you can see how long the request took in milliseconds. So you get a nice little bit of information re regarding the logging. And there's much more advanced uh, filtering that you could do using Loki's logging query language. Uh, that's outside the scope of this tutorial. That's all you need to configure Loki, in a monitoring microservice that accepts your Prometheus logs, your open telemetry. And you could also you know, add the open telemetry collector to this uh, microservice, this monitored microservice, and have it write uh, different information around the requests and things like that. But this is a nice way where if you're throwing an error or something like that, and you're throwing that error and you're logging it with serial log, then it's going to come up here and you could search by errors. It's very fast and you'll be able to determine, you know, what's going on, which microservice it's coming from. And so you get that nice aggregation of all your logs at one central location. You've now set up Loki, you've configured it uh, in a monitoring service, and then you've configured your microservice to log to it. Uh, using serial log. And so if you ever have any errors that pop up with serial log, it's all going to be aggregated right there in Loki for you to be able to use. I will tell you, I've never used this yet in a production environment. So this is just kind of a research project for me, but it was a fun little thing for me to kind of dig into and I really enjoyed it. So I hope you did too. Take care.